Hello everybody. Today I wanted to go over how to stitch lettering. I've gotten a lot of questions about the best embroidery stitches to do that. So I'm going to go over four of my favorites. So the first one I want to go over today is a back stitch. This is probably going to be the easiest of all of the stitches to embroider letters with. And it's honestly my favorite. It's my go-to. I probably use this most of the time if I'm embroidering lettering. So for the A, we'll go ahead and do a back stitch. So if you're not familiar with back stitch, I'll go over some of the basics. So you're gonna come up through the fabric and then you're gonna skip some space and go back down through the fabric. Now you're going to leave some space again and come up through the fabric. And then you'll go back down where that last stitch is. And then you repeat. One tip that I have for backstitching lettering is that when you're going around curves, especially like right here, you're going to want to make sure that you're making your stitches pretty small. If you make your stitches super long, the actual curve of the line is going to look jagged. So I would just focus on making these stitches as even as possible, but also really short, kind of like how I'm doing it. So I'm kind of lengthening the stitches a little bit around this line that's not as curved. You can keep your stitches uniform, so keep them as short as they were around the curve, but I don't really think it looks bad if your stitch length is different a little bit depending on where you're working the stitch at, but that's just my preference, so I think it's just kind of personal opinion what you end up doing. And one other tip that I wanted to go over is to make sure that your next stitch that's butting up against the previous stitch sits flush with that stitch. Because if you're leaving gaps or if you're going along the side of it, it's not going to look as smooth. So that will help you a lot too to make sure that the lines are nice and smooth. So when it comes to doing this line right here for the A, I'm going to go and butt up against the other stitches, but I'm not going to go through them because when you go through the stitches, you're going to split them and it's going to create kind of an irregular shape to the, each, to the previous stitch. So you just want to touch it, but you don't want to go through it. So you don't want to be going straight up through it. So just be careful of that and make sure that it sits up against the stitch but not doesn't go through it. And that is the finished A using the back stitch. So the next stitch I wanted to go over is a split stitch. I like this one because it creates a little bit of a bolder line. This stitch will be splitting the stitch in half basically when you are stitching it. So you wanna make sure that you're using an even number of strands of the six strand cotton floss. I'm using all six, but you could easily use four. I think two is a little bit too hard. It gets a little bit finicky to split just two strands in half. So I would stick with either four or six strands for this stitch. So you're gonna go up through the fabric and you're gonna come back down just like you did with the back stitch but instead of skipping space and going to the next stitch, you're gonna split this in half. And then you will go back down through the fabric. 
and again you will split this one again. And repeat. So this stitch can get a little bit jagged. Um, so I like to kind of try to control where the stitch is laying before I split the stitch to kind of just keep the stitches laying nicely. Otherwise, as you can see in this first stitch, let me zoom in so you can kind of see. Otherwise, with this first stitch here, you can kind of see the tail of it. So I'm just trying to kind of control where the stitches are laying and smooth them out a little bit. So here is the finished bee using a split stitch. As you can see, it's a little bit bolder of a line and it is a little bit more jagged. I don't use this one as often, but it is still one of my favorites to use if I'm not gonna be using back stitch. So the next stitch that I wanted to go over is chain stitching. So for chain stitches, I am going to be using three strands of the six strand cotton floss. I think that using six strands on lettering, unless you're making gigantic letters, is going to be too thick and it's just going to be hard to work with. So I would only use two or three strands for this stitch. So you're going to go up through your fabric and you're going to go back down where you came up, but you're going to basically catch the loop. and you will leave some space and catch the loop with your needle. And you will just continue and it will create a chain. This stitch is even bolder, I think, in my opinion. <laughs> than the split stitch, but I think it looks really pretty for lettering when done right. And I think one of the biggest pointers I can give for chain stitching when you are embroidering letters with it is to try and keep the stitch length as consistent as possible because it's pretty obvious when you lengthen your stitches, the loops get kind of long and dragged out. So this is one stitch that I would say you definitely want to um, keep the stitches pretty uniform. So to end this stitch, you're just gonna go back down through the fabric at the very tip of the last loop you made. And that's how the chain stitch looks. So the final stitch that I wanted to go over is a stem stitch and I feel like the stem stitch is probably the most complicated out of all of them to work on curves. So I've saved it for last. <laughs> I will be using three strands of the six strand cotton thread. I think that it'll be easier to use this way around this tight curve. The line tends to get a little bit wonky when you work curves with this stitch and I think using a little less thread will help. So I'm gonna start on the straight line of the D and then we'll work around the curves. So you're gonna come up through your fabric and I'm going to keep my thread to one side as I'm working the stitch. If you keep alternating back and forth, it's gonna make your stitches look kind of wonky. So I'm going to keep it to the side and skip some space. 
And then I'm going to basically grab the fabric halfway up between that initial stitch and pull the thread through. And then this time I'm going to skip the same space, but you're going to count the space from the stitch that you just came up through to the fabric because you're going to end up coming up towards the bottom of that initial stitch. So I'm going to grab the fabric, come up towards the end of that first stitch, and pull through. And then you'll just continue doing this. And on straight lines, this stitch is super easy. It just gets a little bit harder to make smooth around curves. So again, I'm just keeping my thread to one side as I'm stitching. And now that we're going, getting closer to this curve right here, I'm going to tighten up my stitches just a little bit, like I've done for every other stitch. And sometimes it's hard to grab the fabric with your needle the way I'm doing. So if you're in like an awkward spot, you can also just go down through the fabric and kind of hold on to that extra thread and then come back up at the end of the stitch. So you're not having to grab the fabric with your needle that way, if that helps you. And as you can see, I've really tightened up the stitches. So as you can see, this stitch is pretty challenging. I've even kind of got like a little bit of a weird <laughs> jagged line, but sometimes you can kind of pull your stitches to lay flat. So I kind of fixed it. It doesn't look as crazy now. But that is the biggest challenge of the stitch is just getting the stitches to lay right and not look like they're just kind of all over the place. And that is the final result for the stem stitch. I think it turned out pretty nice. I personally still struggle with the stem stitch a little bit. It's hard for me to get neat and I'm kind of impatient sometimes. So I think it turned out pretty nice. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and please let me know in the comments what your favorite stitch out of all of these is to use for lettering or if you have another stitch that you like to use for lettering that I didn't go over. But if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I have a bunch of other YouTube tutorials and I also have a ton of free patterns and tutorials on my website and I'll leave the link below. Thanks so much.